All right, to revamp our player movement, we'll go ahead and select our player. And let's go ahead in our scripts folder. I'm going to right click and create C sharp scripts. And this one we're going to call player movement. And then go ahead and open up the player movement script. And while that's loading, select our player again. And I'm going to drag the player movement script on there. Now, we currently have our move in the player controller script. And we're going to change that. So let's go ahead and open up. We can resize this here. I'm going to open up our player controller script. And we'll go ahead and from our update method, remove the move information. And we're going to go ahead and remove the method for enforce max speed. Delete that. We can go ahead and select our move player method. Copy this. And in our player movement script, we can paste that down. I didn't control X. That's OK, but we can just delete it now. So we got our display points, display health our play sound method and our change health method. Leave everything as is for now. Um, we can go ahead and control X to copy our float speed. And we don't need this other max speed variable for right now. So we can go ahead and delete that and save our player controller script. So our player will not be able to move at the moment go into our player movement script and we'll add that variable up at the top. Alrighty, and I'm just gonna change a few names and show you a shortcut. So to change the name of move horizontal, you're gonna double click one of these variables, right click and do rename. And I'm just gonna click in here and delete the move. If you have to, you can just rename it. Then we'll click apply or enter, we're good. Double click the move vertical, right click, rename. There we go. And then our vector three movement, we're gonna actually call this movement direction. This is the direction that we're moving in. Let's delete the rigid body. We don't have the rigid body information on this script. We'll move this down. And this one's giving us a red line and error because it's supposed to be the movement direction variable. This is just for the draw ray so we can see the ray for that. And then underneath our vector three here, we're gonna do a quick movement direction dot normalize and save this control S. Now let's take a look at this code. So first we have move player and it's not being run or called, but we can copy this paste it and update and put our semicolon so it's running every frame update runs every frame we don't need void start so we'll go ahead and delete that save it again okay so now we're calling move player every frame now the first two lines here we have two variables that we created that we're storing inputs now these inputs come from unity to see all of the inputs from unity we're going to go to edit and then project settings click that in here you'll see we have multiple inputs for horizontal vertical a fire button jump button and these are kind of all pre set up and we can call them directly by name so horizontal if you expand the arrow on that you'll see that you get a and d and the left arrow and the right arrow so the inputs are going to either call a negative one or a one, depending on the direction. So if we press A or the left arrow when playing the game, it's going to be a negative one going to the left for our position, right? The negative one is just representing the vector direction. So I'll have more information on this. Uh, I'll post in the description a link to another video soon for more information about Unity inputs but that's a quick summary of that whereas if we press the d or right arrow it'll go one so it'll go in the right direction that's the right vector our vertical 
right, is forward and backwards, and we're storing that. So our vector three movement, we're basically saying, hey, the X, which is left and right, we're getting the horizontal inputs. Y is up and down, so that's a zero because we're not jumping or going up and down right now. And vertical uh, controls is going to control the Z, which is going backwards and forwards. And then we're normalizing that, and we're gonna also make a few changes to fix a common error with that as well. There are three ways that we could code to move the character, and that is we could get the rigid body like we did before and add force. We could use the transform.position, which we don't want to do in this case. And then we could also use the translate as well, which we're gonna go ahead and do. So underneath this, we're gonna go ahead and write transform dot translate and it moves our transform in the direction and distance using this method and in parentheses we have the translation so where are we wanting to move well that's going to be our movement direction that's whatever our inputs are that's the direction that we want to go and then we're going to times that by time dot delta time and delta time is the amount of time that has passed since the last frame but it's going to have a completion in seconds so our speed for our player is going to change because now instead of being per frame it's going to be per second so we'll save this control s and we can play test it out And you can see our bar moves very slowly. Now, when we update our player graphics, we want our player to rotate to the direction of movement. And right now, it's not doing that. We've got a couple things. Um, we can bring this scale back up. This came with the URP project. I'm just going to delete that uh, simple camera controller script. We don't need that. And we'll go ahead and open up our player movement script in a second. But first things first, we have our player um, so that we can see our, our player in action. You could do a, two things right now. One is we could just throw a random texture on it to see the texture be moving. Um, or two, we could also right click on our player in the hierarchy and we'll just add a capsule we're gonna give him some cool gla uh, glasses call it whatever you want so i'll go ahead and just move this let's see we're gonna have to go into our player prefab so we can go to our player Go to overrides and do apply all. We can go to our prefabs and just double click the player, which now has the capsule. Now I can grab the eyewear object and pull it out. Oh, and my snapping's on, so we'll turn that off, bring it back. Okay, so we wanna rotate this in the Z. We'll do 90 degrees. We also need to shrink this down, let's see. Maybe 0.3. There we go. Yeah. What's up? All right. So we got this eyewear. We don't really need the capsule collider on it. We can just turn that off. And I like the gray material here. We'll go up to our player. For our player, right now, the rigid body is giving it gravity. It's going to fall. So what we could do for right now is just go ahead and turn off the use gravity portion of that for right now and you can we can save that if you have auto save off which is usually what I like to do I'm going to go back in save my progress as always maybe the glasses should have been a different color so it's easier to see but anyway okay so now um, if we play and we have our character moving around very slowly you'll see the red line but the player is not rotating. So now let's go into our scripts and open up our player movement script. So we have 
are transform.translate. So we're getting the direction and we're moving that direction per frame, but we want to control that with our speed. So we're going to go ahead and add in our speed variable in front for calculations be slightly more optimal, but we'll have our speed variable first. And that's going to control how fast the player moves, right? Then we have our movement direction. And we have our time dot delta time. And then we're going to add in and put a comma here and we're going to we're going to specify the space that we want the player to move in. The player is moving relative to the world. So here we can just do space dot world. So now we're translating with controlling how fast in what direction based on our inputs per second relative to the world. Now, let's go in here and add a line of code. So here, what we want to do is we want to check first, hey, is the movement direction not equal to, or not, is not uh, vector 3.0. So we wanna check if the player is moving by checking if the movement direction is not zero, right? Because if the player is moving, it'll either be a negative one or a one in the X or the Z vector. So if the player is moving, then we want the player to rotate smoothly to the direction. Um, but we're first gonna set up simply by putting in transform dot forward. So we're getting the forward and we're gonna set that to, we're assigning it the movement direction. So the player will have the forward of the character will automatically, basically it's going to snap to the movement. So this is the, the rotation. So this is going to be very snappy. And we can test that out. Did I save? Yes. So we click play. And we move. Right? The player is then snapping really quickly, right? So that would be good for the snappy movements, but we actually don't want that we want to actually have a smooth rotation. And so for that, what we're going to do is just go ahead and delete this. We can see that was real snappy because it just makes it look. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use from Unity a quaternion, which it's very complicated, but in a nutshell, it just means it's storing the rotations, right? It's storing the rotations for the X, Y, and Z. We're going to call uh, this first one ro rotate towards. We want to identify in this variable, this is going to be where we want the character to rotate towards. So we get quaternion. And quaternion is a structure that has a method that we can get called look rotation. And that's going to create the rotation with the specified forward and upwards directions. So we'll do look rotation in parentheses. We have our movement direction and the vector three dot up. Then what we need to do is get our transform dot rotation of our player object. And we're gonna assign the rotation to be a quaternion. And we're gonna use a method from that called rotate towards. In the parentheses, we're gonna put where are we rotating from and where are we rotating to? And then we have a float value for the max degrees delta. So we'll put that in. 
And then here for the float max degrees, we want to have a variable that controls how fast the player rotates to the direction of movement. So for right now, maybe I'll just put 1f times time dot delta time for the per second. And let's copy that and put that here. Sorry. So we're taking our current character's transform rotation and then we're going to have it rotate towards the rotate towards variable. We could call it rotate two. Maybe so it's kind of different. Yeah. Okay, so now we need the rotation speed variable. So up at the top here, put in a float for our rotation speed. We'll grab that and we'll put that instead of our 1f. So now we take our current rotation, the character will take the per second and rotate to based on our rotation speed. So we'll save this. Now, before you click play, we want to select our player. And remember, we haven't set the speed or the rotation speed. So the speed will set that to five again. We may want that faster, but for now, just a placeholder. And the rotation speed, we're going to set this to 720 and then control S to save this and then play test. And then we'll see that our character is able to move around and rotate smoothly. Super nice. Oh yeah. Looking good, looking good, blue sphere, looking good. Now we have a problem with normalizing our vector three for our movement direction. And we'd see this also with a thumbstick or thumb pad. So what we're gonna do to fix that real quick is we'll open back up our player controller script. And underneath our vector three movement direction variable, what we want to do is get the the magnitude because we're having an issue whenever we're normalizing the magnitude and the vectors. So what we want to do is we want to get the movement direction magnitude and we're going to assign this to a variable a little bit shorter for we're just it's a float number and we're just going to call it just simply magnitude okay then we'll take that variable and we're going to set it to keep it from having problems we're going to clamp it so we're going to use our math f which is a bunch of math functions and we're going to use a method called clamp 0, 1. And this is going to clamp the value between 0 and 1 and then return that value. So we want our magnitude to either be a 0 or a 1. So the value that we're clamping, well, we created that variable, is just called magnitude. So it'll clamp the magnitude and reassign it back to the variable be kind of kind of confusing because we get, we're getting the magnitude from the movement direction putting it inside a variable called magnitude and then we're we're clamping that magnitude to make sure it always is either a zero or a one and reassigning it so if the magnitude was going to change to something different it will automatically clamp it then we'll have a smooth movement when our character is moving diagonally now let's add a little bit more control over our character for let's say steps or a slope or something like that. Let's first go ahead and select our player and we could kind of minimize some of these for right now. And we're going to add component and we'll get a character controller. You can kind of think of this as a motor. Let's right click here and create a 3D cube. And we'll call this uh, slope. We'll go ahead and rotate this. Just do 45 is fine in the X. And then we'll scale this in the Y, say, to about uh, 5. 
we could do our global pivots bring this here and then we'll do two on the x so we get this slope and then we could move it uh back just a little bit that's good let's add some steps here so we'll go ahead and right click and create another 3d object that is a cube we can reset our transforms over here and we'll go ahead and on the z we'll extend this out by two all right and i'll set our y to maybe 0.5 and we can call this step one and then we'll go ahead and control d to duplicate it and we can move this over set that back to one and i think that's good and when we play this it currently wouldn't go up there without our player having these controls now this will not work yet because we don't have it set up so we want to go back and open up our player movement script and we need to set a few things before we can actually use this motor because we click play and it's going to be out of control um, so we got to get it in control so in our script here first thing that we want to have is add in and then now we will need our start function and we'll add in here in our start we're we're making sure this variable ha is assigned to get the com the actual component character controller and store it in that variable this is the the type as well as making sure it gets the component then down here currently we're using this transform dot translate i'm going to go ahead and comment that out for right now because we're not going to use that instead we're using the controller which is the character controller component on the player and we're able to use two public methods there is move which is more complex and there's also simple move which makes this more straightforward and easy so we're going to start with that and then here we just need to get our movement direction and then we times that by the magnitude and that's a basic startup. Now the cool thing about simple move, it does have a gravity calculation, but it does make it hard to do jump or flying, but we'll kind of fix that later on. Switch to Unity and select your player. We wanna set a few settings here. So the first thing for right now is we're gonna go ahead and take our rigid body and remove that component. For the character controller, there's a little circle with a question mark you can click to get more information. And there's a few secrets here. But let's talk about some of the basics first. So we have our slope limit is set to 45. So our slant, our slope here is 45 in the game. It won't go up it. So what we could do is set that for, to 46. So it will be able to do that. Our step offset is 0.3, which will allow our character to step up stairs only if it's closer to the ground than that indicated value, okay? Next up, the skin width refers to the character controller collider and other colliders in which this is kind of like a buffer zone that would allow, say, another collider to go through the player's collider. So in some cases, the larger skin width value will reduce jittering, but a lower skin width could also cause the character to get stuck. So this is where a good setting, they say, would be to make this a value of 10% of the radius, approximately. For right now, maybe just going to do 0 0.03, and then we have the minimum move distance. So if the character tries to move below the indicated value, it will not move at all. This can be used to reduce jitter. And in most situations, this value should just be left at zero. Um, so we could literally just set that at zero and it's fine. Then we have our center. And this will offset the capsule collider, which you can see right here. We have a sphere collider, but the character controller 
has a collider. We can turn off our sphere collider and you can see by moving the X, there's our collider for the character controller. So we have the radius and the height of this, which this is going to be specifically for, right, when we replace the player geometry with something fancier, fancier graphics, we would want our radius and height to kind of fit the character. So a couple tricks here for fine tuning. A lot of times you don't want to set your slope limit to be too small. Um, so often you might want to just try 90 degrees works best and use that for testing. And that will, the character controller will not be able to climb up walls anyway due to the capsule shape. Um, the other thing is we don't want our player to get stuck. So one of those tricks for not getting stuck, a couple things, is it's recommended to keep the minimum move distance to zero. And then Unity also says that it's good practice to keep the skin width at least greater than 0 0.01. So we don't want it less than 0 0.01. And we also want it to be more than 10% of the radius. So, so you'd want it to be, yeah, more than the 10% of the radius. Yeah, maybe we'll make that. 0 0.06. So we can test that out. And our player is moving a whole lot slower. So we'll go ahead and crank this up a little bit more. And I noticed my speed is not increasing. So I go back and take a look at the script and I totally forgot to add that in because our simple move is only getting the vector direction and timesing it by the magnitude. So we could go ahead and put our speed variable in here times the movement direction and save that. And then we'll want to set our player speed back to five and I'm going to go ahead and also go up to our override since I created a prefab for this and I'm not in prefab mode I'm going to apply all the changes that I've made to this so it's good to go then we can save our level control s save your scripts and play test and there we have our slope And our steps. Yes, looking wonderful.